Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will solve some of the important questions related to CCIP 3.1 and these questions are as per the new exam pattern. So let's start. Our first question is the European standard for NDE of visual welds by visual examination is. So four codes are mentioned and they have asked which code is applicable for visual examination or visual inspection. And the second question is with reference to the previous question, yes, this question number one. So with reference to the previous question, yes, with reference to the previous question, two of the standards, two of the standards are closely linked to each other. Which are they? Two of the standards means among these four standards, two of the standards are closely linked to each other. Which are they? So first you have to answer that which among the four options which code is applicable for visual examination and the second question is among these four uh, codes which two codes are closely related to each other so first let us understand about these codes see first is IEN EN15614 so EN15614 is a standard that specifies the requirements for the specification and qualification of welding procedures so this code is related to qualification of welding procedures the second code was 2560 and 2560 is related to covered electrodes second one is for uh, covered electrodes the third code is en 9606 and it is about the qualification testing of welders so this is for the qualification of weld welders and the fourth one is en is 637 so in 17637 is for visual inspection or visual examination so our first one question uh, question was among the four options which one is for visual examination so as you can see the last option that is en 17637 is for visual examination so option d is the correct one now with reference to the previous question two of the standards are closely linked to each other okay so first we'll see the option in option a we have a and b a is by 15614 and b is 2560 so as i had shown you that 1561 is for qualification of welding procedures and 2560 is for covered electrodes so these are not uh, these don't seem to be related with e each other hence we'll discard this option now we'll go to second option that is b and c b is en 2560 and c is 9606 so let's see what is that so 2560 is for welding electrodes and 9606 is for qualification of welders so i don't think that this is also anyhow related with each other now option a and c so a is 15614 and c is 9606 let's see what is there so 15614 is for qualification of welding procedures and 9606 is for qualification of welders so uh, see uh, 1561 is for qualification of welding procedure and 9606 is qualification of welder so these two uh, codes are for qualification but the first one is for qualification of welding procedure and, procedure and the, this one 9606 is for qualification of welders so these two done are done before the start of the job means first your wps is done then the qualification of welders are done so these are not closely associated but yes somehow there is some relation but first we'll see the option d also so option d is a and d a and D, A is EN15614 and D is EN17637. See, so 15614 is for qualification of welding procedure and 17637 is for visual examination. So I can say that for qualification of welding procedure, what happens? A test coupon is welded and that test coupon is subject to visual examination. Hence, we can say that 15614 and 17637 is somehow related because the qualification of welding procedure cannot be completed without visual inspection. Hence, I think D, option D is more appropriate among the four options. So, our correct option is D. 
now before moving forward i would request you to please join my channel after subscribing my channel you see a join icon and by pressing that uh, join icon and by paying a very small amount you can become a member of my channel and you can support my initiative financially now question number 2 what four criteria are necessary to produce hydrogen induced cold cracking so hydrogen induced cold cracking is HICC and I have explained the entire mechanism of HICC in my C SWIP chapter 17 video that is uh, for weldability chapter. So let us see. These four conditions shall meet for hydrogen induced cold cracking. The hydrogen level must be greater than 15 ml per 100 gram of world metal deposited. Stress must be greater than 0.5 of the yield stress. Temperature must be less than 300 degrees Celsius and micro structure should be susceptible mi microstructure uh, susceptible microstructure that is uh, hardness shall be greater than 400 beakers. So hydrogen level, stress, temperature and susceptible microstructure these four conditions will lead to hydrogen induced cold cracking and if you will see the option C that is hydrogen grain susceptible microstructure stress and temperature below 300 degrees Celsius. So option C is the most appropriate and most correct answer. Now question number 2a with reference to the previous questions means this question why is temperature important in this cracking mechanism? See what happens hydrogen when the weld metal is hot then the hydrogen molecule can pass through the weld metal and it, it will come up on the surface. But when the weld is cooled fastly then the hydrogen, then the hydrogen molecule, hydrogen atoms will be trapped inside the welding or HAZ region and that will lead to HICC. Hence at low temperature the hydrogen is less mobile. This is the correct op option. Why? Because at lower temperature hydrogen will be less mobile and it will be trapped in the weld metal or HAZ region. Hence option A is the correct answer. Now question number 3. Which of the following elements is added to steel to give resistance to creep at elevated service temperature? So it is nothing but the molybdenum. Molybdenum is added to steel to give its higher resistance to creep at elevated, elevated temperature service. Now question number 3 is with reference to the previous questions means this question what is creep? So this is a very simple question it is asking about the definition somehow it is related to the definition of creep. So let's see the option it's a form of cracking it's a form of deformation it's a rupture it's a type of corrosion. So among these the option B is the most appropriate that is it is a form of deformation. Friends what happens creep is it, it is something which happens when a material is subject to loading at elevated temperature that load will be not necessarily more than the yield strength that but that load will be less but what happens that load will be for a extended means for years or years for for a longer period of time when the for longer period of time a load will be subjected at elevated temperature it will lead to deformation and finally failure so this is the creep so here the explanation is there. If you want, you can pause the video and read the explanation. Now, question number four. In an arc welding process, which of the following is the correct term used for the amount of weld metal deposited per minute? So this is a very simple question. It is asking the correct term for weld metal deposited per minute. So this is the deposition rate. Depo deposition rate is the deposited weld metal per minute. So deposition rate is the correct answer. Now, with reference to the previous question and the correct answer. So correct answer is deposition rate. So with res res respect to the previous question and the correct answer that is deposition rate. How is this measured? How deposition rate is measure measured? So deposition rate is nothing but the weight that is the deposited weld metal divided by the time. Time may be minute, may be second or may be hours. So weight by time is the deposition per uh, deposition per minute or uh, you know uh, deposition rate weight by time so among these options you can see option b that is kg per hour kg is the weight and hour is the 
unit of time. So kg per hour is the correct answer. Now question number five, which of the following steels is considered non-magnetic? So non-magnetic are mostly austenitic stainless steel. Austenitic stainless steel are non-magnetic and uh, the austenitic stainless steel are named by any steel which uh, name or specification starts with three is austenitic stainless steel like 304, 316, etc. So here in this option, you have 18 percent chrome 8 percent nickel 18 percent chrome and 8 percent nickel is a form of stainless austenitic stainless steel it is this is nothing but ss304 so in ss304 somehow the percentage is 18 percent chrome and 8 percent nickel so ss304 is austenitic stainless steel and it is non-magnetic and that is 18 percent a chromium and 8 percent nickel so answer is a now with reference to the previous questions means this uh, the previous question that is this one and the correct answer current answer is 18% chrome and 8% nickel which one of the which one of the materials listed is austenitic so as i told you austenitic stainless steel name start with 3 so here you can say s316 so s316l is an austenitic stainless steel now here you have the explanation if you want you can read that by pausing the video friends we have come to an end of our today's video hope you like our today's video thank you very much